Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Bottom right hand corner, we have Machine starting as the Yellow Zerg. Bottom left hand corner, we have Aram God, who I think is Nyokan. I'm not 100% positive on that. It's possible it's Whip, but I'm damn near sure it's Nyokan. And that, as a result, makes it, I think we finally found the one person where I actually feel like I have to be neutral versus Machine. Usually I outright root for a Machine regardless, but Nyokan, a co-caster of mine in BSL, incredible player, really has casted everything. So he's did the professional ASL stuff in Korea, lived in Korea for a time. Yeah, incredible guy. Uh, if you do not already sub to his channel, do it. He has got really fun user redemptions on Twitch and brilliant player as well. Actually went pretty deep in BSL, I think the season before last, and I would not be shocked to see him go deep this season on top of it. Actually out of the... Uh, I feel I am the lone, not amazing BSL Pro League commentator. You got Raz, who's an incredible player. You have Machine, who's also done some casting. Um, although I think a little bit less frequently. You have Nyokin, who seems to be the more stable, the staple of BSL casting. He's gone really, really deep. And the thing I love about Nyokin is, is I think he's just really intelligent and on he just got fun play styles often as well. He'll do interesting stuff like open up mech and whatnot versus erg opponents. Looks like he's going to plop down a barracks up right in corner. He's going to be scouted by Machine, and it looks like he is going to be opening up with a 12 hatch. This is on Polypoid, so four player, very macro heavy standard. This feels like the new Python for people that get that reference. Looks like the drone scout is going to get, well, is it going to go across? No, okay. It looks like it is going to go left. Initial SCV scout is going to end up going for a clockwise scout. It's going to come across Machine Space last. It might shift positions once this drone enters the section of the map. So nothing too crazy as of yet. No gas grab quick. So it looks like this is just gonna be standard Terran play rather than a mech opener. Barracks has been spotted and that SCV might get a little bit harassed. Now I'm wondering if this SCV as a result of seeing this drone in base is gonna go caddy corner. Marine in production, pool placed, a quick extractor, which suggests we are gonna see two hatch to play. It looks like that's additional scouting SCV now moving out. So this one's going to return to base. This one's going, now that it's taken a little bit of damage, going to go check out that bottom right-hand corner. Very, very clever. As a brief addendum, aye, 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 for people out in Twitch chat land. No additional Marine. So just the single Marine being produced. And it looks like it's going to be one Marine straight into expand. Upon, first of all, confirming the hatchery and seeing no additional Zergling pressure. So smart adjustment of play. From there, now grabbing that refinery behind it, one SCV. Wonder how often that SCV pops out on the other side, and anyway, popping out on the left side this time. So Solo Marine, to provide the defense initially, we do see an initial Zergling, actually initial six Zerglings being produced. So unless that front door, and the Overlord doesn't look like it's gonna shift position to get additional scouting information, but that SCV could very rapidly get wiped out. Stealing a little bit of minerals, and it needs to buy some time, because two Marines versus this many Zerglings on the low ground is bad news for the Marines. So a third Marine in production, bunker being constructed at necessity, and this is going to be close. This, so the SCV's gone. Six Zerglings, this could be a quick one. This is going to be very, very close. So that bunker, fraction of a second away, the Zerglings actually pulling back briefly to regroup. And so just barely the bunker finishes. And now kind of a decent, you can see the nice barrier, but the Zergling's going to pull out. The SCV actually was also able to sneak out. So two Zerglings left on the front. No third base as of yet. There's the Spire being built. So this might just be pure two hatch muta and straight all in two hatch muta because I don't see any motions towards the third base for machine. Zergling speed also being upgraded on top of this. SCV trying to find a window, and actually I take it back, it's going to go ahead and spot that drone making its way out, so it looks like it's just going to be a later hatchery grab from Machine, and he wants to go ahead and grab it towards the upper right-hand corner. Maybe a little bit delayed because he wanted to get that Zergling speed and the Spire. SCV wiped out, though. So, as things stand, though, work account pretty solid. It looks like this is going to be... I, one thing, though, okay, here's all the tech down beneath where I can't really see it. It looks like this is going to be an eBay first plus one weapons into uh, five racks follow-up. And that can really punch Mutalisks hard. And I think that is a strong play against Machine because Machine tends not to be ultra aggressive 
with initial mutilus play, he tends to not to say that his mutilus micro is anything to sneeze at because his mutilus micro is absolutely incredible. But, but more often than not, especially when he's grabbed his third hatch, he's using them more for map control to keep Marines away from the front to buy himself some time. And he tries to play a little bit lighter oftentimes with the mid game mutilus wants to try to keep it as close to five uh, or seven as possible. Let's see if he, and oftentimes he doesn't invest in a plus one weapons upgrade. More often than not, we'll go for plus one carapace. Looks like this overlord now sidling a position to get over that ridge. Comsat stations being built. The additional barracks being plopped down. Looks like it's going to be four instead of the five, however. Missile turret being produced to help deal with those mutalisks. And the mutalisks already on the way. Comsat dropped. I want to see where it... Oh, that's... I can't on this replay, apparently. I'm like, click, click, click. That's right, because it's not a... Just because of how this is... Uh, certain replay mechanics in Brood War, you don't end up able to see it. But anyway, Marines grouping up with their medics. And Machine initially able to pick off Marine there, but took a lot of damage on initial Mutal. A single Zergling wants to suicide into the front bunker to see how many Marines were in that bunker. And it looks like it is going to be the complement of seven Mutalisks. See if they swing around and continue to peck at this. Base is up in the top right. Currently no movement, so it looks like it's going to be a wait on that plus one weapons to finish. Range also waiting on upgrade before any sort of press out of the base. Additional Mulus are making their way out. Hydrolstan already planted. We do have that second gas, a, a Queen's Nest out on the front. I'm not sure I like the positioning of that Queen's Nest. Unless we are seeing a lot more Mutalisks to follow this up. And it is possible. Okay, so we are seeing more Mutalisks. So this is going to be a heavy Mutalisk dedication, which this could be interesting. So plus one weapon. Quick plus one weapon marines. Four racks, so it's not the five racks, but it's still a lot of marines that are going to be coming out on the front. This queen's nest will provide a little bit of a buffer of a sim city, but if machine's not careful, he could end up losing that tech on his front. Ooh, eating another big chunk of damage on one of these mules. He ended up losing that one. Regrouping, one zergling getting out of hand and pulling out, currently holding that high ground with those mules. Third gas is there, but not yet mining. So it looks like it was just going to be, so that's eight mutilus total, I think, that have been, well, nine, I think, after the two, if I'm doing my math right, that have been killed. Stimpak, press forward. Only a single sunken colony, now a second sunk colony being forced, which very wise and prudent. But again, I worry about that queen's nest that could easily be picked off, and that's some gas and time. They'll be held back. Lurker tech a ways away from finishing. The Mule is trying to slow those Marines down. In the meantime, there is a task force of Marine and Medic making their way top right. There's currently no defenses there. It's just the Mutalist. And honestly, Machine has not gotten a lot of kills. He hasn't, ooh, and another split off of Marines here and actually getting around that Overlord vision as well. So Machine not only being forced to build the two Sunken Colonies on the front, also that, we'll see if that Queen's Nest survives, but also, not in proper position, certainly going to lose this Overlord, but might end up losing this expansion altogether as all of the Marines and the Medics converge to the top right. So brilliant maneuver here, especially dodging all that vision. And there's and you, this is the advantage of going to that four hex play. Desperation creep colony being built. Machine didn't see it on the way. That's going to get taken out. The Mutalisks trying to push up, but it, they do. there are a lot of Mutalisks here. But this is continued delayed mining. Ooh, trying to sneak back and forth. The second group trying to move up and actually Machine needs to hurry up and take these Marines out because if it's both grouped together, that will be it. Is able to do so. Lurker's still there. It's going to rush to the ramp, re-engaging. And because he's able to engage the Medic Marine groups in two separate pairs, able to salvage the top right base. Lost a handful of drones, but is able to get that third gas up and running. However, ooh, and another Marine army marching towards the front. Nidus Canal being built. Hydralis Tech is here. I don't see anything outside of the the single lurker, though, up on the high ground. Bit of a ball right there. Some Mutalists getting caught as they were just flying overhead. Midpoint. Double Starport just about to finish. Science facility on the way as well. A little bit slower science vessels than usual, which means the Mutalists are going to be a bit more useful. You do have that plus one carapace right there. Macro hatch being dropped. There's the Defiler Mount. And usually that is you're safe and moving into the late game. Medic Marines skipping everything top right and instead repositioning. 
I take that back immediately starting to move back towards the top right, maybe upon scanning this and seeing all the eggs and not sure which are from the hatchery and which are in fact lurkers to help defend. But right now there's only a single lurker in the upper right hand corner that's very breachable. And I kind of like this, like move units to the top right and then fill in the in-between to cut off reinforcements style of play. So the lurker able with that overlord vision, able to get attack of damage. The mutal is pushing up, they're eating some damage mid range. The drones look like they wanted to either block it. Yeah, just everything flooding here to try to block it. Lurker down, two more lurkers just in the nick of time going to blockade the high ground ramp, a third lurker for good measure to go ahead and seal that out. At the very least, what this will do is deny that natural expansion because three gas is enough to give any Zerg and machine can make good use of it. Consume just about complete. Back at home base for Naokin, double science vessels irradiate being researched. A fifth barracks has been added, plus two weapons making its way, plus one armor is in fact finished and staging up to go ahead and grab that third expansion while there's a transitionary phase before, well, one, while Irradiate's gonna come online, there's that transitionary phase for both players into kind of that late game tech. A bit of consume preventatively for Machine. He's in full turtle mode, dropping that evolution chamber to go ahead and tack on those carapace upgrades. He's already dropping an Ultralist Cavern, which I think is a bit ambitious. He hasn't gotten that fourth gas as of yet. He's expended a lot of gas in Mutalisks thus far and Lurkers. Looks like he is, okay, so he's gonna try to shove to the low ground with the lurkers to go ahead and secure that gas. So the lurkers, yeah, now moving to get in position, irradiate dropping, taking out defilers. Not sure what killed those scourge. Was it the latent irradiate on the defiler? It might've, yeah, just been splash on those scourge, wiping them out, giving four kills to one science vessel out of nowhere. So irradiate dropped all over the place there. The lurkers able to push back to give machine potentially four gas to make that ultralist cavern roll. But Medic Marines, Fire Bats, more Science Vessels starting to push up towards that top right-hand base. I believe the Defiler... Nope, the Defiler's still there. There's also Mutalisk, so this is going to be a critical battle here. Overlord... Sorry, single circling. Wow, they're just chilling there. So he's happy to see each other, I guess. Mutalisks pressing back towards the natural expansion, looking to maybe make a pincer situation, but the Science Vessel's now here. Going to go ahead and drop and irradiate on that Defiler. There is some time bot and a raid dropped on those mutalisks as well. That's gonna be it. There is another defiler up on the high ground. So these are the critical moments. Is machine going to be able to secure that fourth gas or not? Big group, there's a nice bulk medic marine group. In the meantime, Nyokin going to help, can't talk all of a sudden, gonna go ahead and grab the nine o'clock base. Has yet to saturate that third, does have that in position. He's tacking on some additional barracks. Continue to grow that science vessel count. A uh, nice plague dropped on those science vessels in between. Just now saturating, it looks like. More science vessels moving out. He's so, looks like he's just giving up potentially. Well, let's see if he continues. Well, this could be scary. So you got the mutalists there. An irradiate could take care of them. But unless an SCV gets here to the upright in corner, this is four very at-risk science vessels. So it might stop him in his tracks. He's got a big supply lead. Another irradiate dropped on defilers to the north to go ahead and create a bit of seal. It looks like one science vessel did get wiped out as it was unprotected to the north. Sneaking out there, able, oof, very dangerous territory. Able to get another irradiate, so very dangerous irradiates. This very weakened mutalisk sneaking out was hoping to get a glaive bounce. Nothing happening there though. But right now, as far as the long game position, that looks like ultralisks will be a thing. Machine feeling brave enough to go ahead and send out a defiler to see if he could evict troops potentially in the top right to go ahead and start getting position on the map. But right now his natural expansion is pretty well locked in and the natural expansion in the upper right in corner has a bulk of troops there as well. So it's gonna come down to protecting those science vessels. Did I already lose them? Did I miss the science vessel? No, they returned to home base to go ahead and repair this. That, that'll be critical. Keeping that science vessel count and dropping a bunch of radiates in the top right. And so it's gonna be a taxation macro game at this stage. Nine o'clock base up and running. Mineral only up and running. A slew of barracks, however, they are not glowing, which means we're missing some opportunities on macro cycles. That being said, however, Nyokin still with a solid supply lead and a pretty good position. Able to wipe out a free Sutton Colony, it looks like, right there. Going for it, top right. So dropping a combat, pushing it. Able to pick off a handful of lurkers, but expending a lot of medic marines in the process. Zerglings. On the trail, plus one carapace, plus one claws there, by the way. 
Nipen's done a pretty good job of dropping irradiates and forcing out a lot of gas that isn't Ultralisks thus far, but I'm wondering how long that's going to last. The Defiler continuing to press out, not able to land a plague there. So things working out well for Nyokin in a pretty good macro position. Yeah, just needs to continue. It looks like he's just going to go ahead and drop a plague on the Medic Marines that are here. Reinforcements marching their way up. Near 200 supply now for Nyokin. And actually, I kind of now that I think about it, considering the supply counts currently, I kind of like that he just pushed up the Medic Marines that he had a minute ago in the top right, just because might as well expend a, a handful of troops. Needs to be careful, though, because it looks like it's going to be Hydralist <laughs> able to walk up and just kill some science those top right. But yeah, realizing he's got a big supply lead. Again, closing the gap, able to punch down that Nidus Canal. Hydralists that are there are gone. Defiler scrambling. Looks like he, oh, unfortunately dropping a Dark Swarm that makes those Mutalists ineffective. But Ultralisks now walking down the field to clean up what's left. Still a 63 supply lead as those Medic Marines are being pushed back. And there's also the taxation that's going to happen at the natural expansion here, where there's, what, two Lurkers left here? Handful of Defilers otherwise. A bunch of Irradiates being dropped. Emergency Dark Swarm. But it's not going to be that long before there could be pot shots in the bottom right as well. Also, claims being staked in the upper left. A factory being built there. Let's see if some annoying vultures can start taking out the field. There is map control. Well, there was map control. And with these two irradiates and a third irradiate potentially on that ultralist that's trying to sneak its way back out. Going to hug that marine before making his exit. I think actually Nyokin's in a pretty good position. Plus two weapons, plus one armor. The upgrades are actually pretty solid, though, for machines. Got that plus two armor and plus one claws already, so he's matching upgrades. It's really going to come down to these science vessels and these irradiates and how effective they're going to be at plague dodging. Medic Marines diving into that natural expansion. Spore Colony hitting some science vessels but not getting any kills. Spore Colony is going to go down. Medic Marines pushing in. Nidus Canal trying to be rebuilt to the bottom right. Some troops reinforcing from the north, but now Medic Marines diving in. Lurkers not burrowed top right. Critical air. So attacks on two fronts. Ultralisks and Zerglings look like they're going to be able to clear that out with the Adrenal Upgrades. And now, all of a sudden, with two cleaned up attacks, however, Supply is looking a little bit more even. So two whiffs of attacks. I'm not sure how Machine managed to defend that. It looked like he got caught by surprise in SCV trying to battle it out as well, but got worked out. Machine now pressing a counterattack. Those That will be quickly squashed with the Medic Marines level 2 armor there. Some Ultras now taking the front. And I think this machine's kind of halfway between an Ultralisk force and kind of going for Plague Hydralisk Defiler. And it, he hasn't made a dedication one direction or the other. Battlecruiser taking the field, going to harass some stuff top right. But right now, machine 10 supply down. He needs to do something about this top left base. It looks like siege tanks are being, hara or being produced and might be able to, if they can get out in the field and, I don't know, looks like some distance mining SCVs doing their job. They do what they're told to do. Plagued Battlecruiser with those Hydralisks will be taken care of momentarily. Science Vessel continuing to try to drop some Plague top right. Hydralisks grouping up to take care of that Battlecruiser. This is one fight I never understood in the, the official Brood War canon, I'm going to have to say. Because you had... Battlecruisers are like these huge planetary-sized things, right? They're just gigantic. When you have these Hydralisks that are basically the size of a Marine, yet, like, I don't know, this many Hydralisks can take out a Battlecruiser... Go figure. Anyway, Machine sneaking into the 9 o'clock base. The Zerglings and the Ultras should be able to shut that down, either force a lift or force an emptying of bases altogether. A huge amount of Medic Marine, though, looking to go ahead and pile drive that location. Battlecruisers harassing. Looks like they're going to pick out a Defiler, and there's some Ultras and other things to attack here as well. Hydralisks engaging right there. So lift off, a little bit of a nuisance, but that isn't going to cost that 9 o'clock location necessarily. Siege tanks starting to group up top left. And that is, well, I don't know. The Ultra is able to get there. The Zerglings as well. And that might be the end of these three siege tanks. And with a little bit of reinforcing, this space might be at risk. It looks like Medic Marine Force is going up there to deal with that. But Machine now out on the map. Ultralisks making their way across. SEV with some explosive gas going to lead the way in a kamikaze attack. Going to engage. Looks like Hydralis straight up. This is one of those situations where I'm not sure whether you want to drop Plague or when you drop Swarm, but it looks like neither getting dropped currently. Swarm now being dropped and Plague. 12 o'clock base being grabbed by Machine. Still has a lot of troops mid-map. 
About 20 supply down. That ultra is still alive top left corner. So has eaten, has feasted on a lot of siege tanks. Three clock base looks like it wants to get grabbed, but Plague Medic Marines going to sneak in and take care of that drone there. Kind of scatterings of troops all over the place. That 12 o'clock base looks like it needs to be canceled by a machine because Marines starting to sneak up and wipe that out. The main is mined out for Nyokin. The mineral only is still very healthy. Natural expansion looking light, but that's basically going to be three mining bases compared to the, uh, well, what will be soon three mining, well, four if a machine gets that up, and five, although this isn't going to last very long. Ultra streaming out on top of those Marines mid-map. This could be very juicy plague situation, but it looks like Dark Swarm being dropped instead before that, as that Ultralis falls. Ultralis now chasing down that Medic Marine group, and these Medic Marines now getting obliterated as Ultralisks in large numbers taking the field, supported by Hydralisks and Zerglings. Adrenal upgrades, just, yeah, everything you want out of a Zerg army. Bulked up. A lot of siege tanks here in the top left. A bunker being planted. I don't know that it's going to be sufficient. 12 o'clock, maybe if the units from the 12 o'clock sneak around, but this is still giving time for this 3 o'clock base to come online. So machine can keep rolling that economy. Currently in the red, however. Troops loading into that bunker. A troop loading into that bunker. And siege tanks right there. And machine might want to think twice with this number of siege tanks holding that high ground. Medic Marines trying to wedge in between and science vessels scooting in to go ahead and irradiate everything in between. So Machine's army very quickly vanishing. Science vessel did get picked off by the Hydralists in open field. A few troops being left at the 12 o'clock to go ahead and deny that. Ultras trying to catch what they can on retreat, but now I worry about Machine's ability to keep up in the macro war over the long term. So he does have that 3 o'clock base. I don't know how long he's going to hold it, but he's still been locked to 4. Uh, for gas, although his main's depleted, that natural expansion is depleted. So effectively running at, well, let's go ahead and check. He's got a little bit of gas left there, a little bit of gas left there. Really needs to cap that gas at the 3 o'clock location keep those ultralists and defilers rolling. 20 supply behind the medic marines. Well, see if I can find the engineering bay. It looks like the upgrades have halted for the moment. Drones being caught mid-map. A bunch of irradiates being dropped that would, would be machines potential mineral only. They're going to push in to that natural expansion, catching defilers. So more gas being expended, and Machine does not have a lot of gas that he can levy or afford. More Medic Marines also sneaking out, maybe going to go for an attack on that top left. So natural expansions breach. Hydral's trying to engage from the rear, but they're not under that protection of, well, they're just on that edge of the Dark Swarm. And Ultralis engaging too many Medic Marines on the corner. Lurker trying to press in, but the natural's gone. That's going to be a depleted gas that's emptied. That I'm not sure that Queen production is that big a deal, but the Hydralis then is also exposed if that gets picked off. Looks like the Ultralis Lurkers and Hydralis are going to be able to clean that up, but not before Marines are pouring into this 3 o'clock base. There was a defensive swarm dropped, a sunken colony trying to be built. That 3 o'clock base looks like it's going to get wiped out, and that was a critical gas the machine needed to secure. So that's gone. He has a few latent troops kind of scurrying every which way, but right now I feel like this is firmly gone into Nyokin's hands. So Medic Marines die, but did their job. And Siege Tanks starting to walk out onto the field. They're going to go ahead and take that high ground for the mineral only. So very aggressive positioning there. Science Vessel out in no man's land. So Machine needs to smash a base and smash it rapidly because he's lost his natural expansion. He's going to have to dis Yeah, he's distance mining currently there. His mains mined out, trying to regrab that third. I don't know how long that's going to last. All sorts of barracks behind this. And the and the, we got three starports pumping science vessels now. So it can very, very rapidly rebuild. Nine o'clock base is humming. Top left is humming. Um, the natural is already grabbed. You have those SCVs transferring to get that rolling. So a strong economy. But the supply count has closed within 10. There's a huge amount of ultralisks out in the field. No radiates have been dropped on this army as of yet. That being said, I may have spoken just a half second too soon because the science vessels are now in hot pursuit. Need to be very, very careful against these Hydralisks, however. That plus the plague is going to be short working. Couple Ultralisks eating irradiate as they're engaging the Medic Marine, able to punch them into the wall. One Science Vessel dying as it's cycling across. Now, if Machine actually can get this army to wipe out the mineral only and maybe dive into that natural expansion, he might just be able to overwhelm everything and retake the match in a complete turnaround. Because right now, supplies. 20 supply down, 
and the natural expansion being breached. Dark Swarm there, and that's usually a game-ending maneuver. The one trick is, is that there could be a complete rebuild top left to stay in this match. Right now, the natural expansion breach, this is where all of the production is currently outside of those siege tanks, so Machine finding breathing room, doing damage. Let's see if he can saturate that third, or I should say that three o'clock location in the meantime. Hasn't touched it as of yet, so he's still behind in the bank. Some fire bats joining the fray out of desperation. Medic Marines in between. And there is enough of SimCity where this is really gonna frustrate those Ultralisks. Some lurkers now planting up on the high ground. The science facility actually would be a critical building to wipe out. Groupings of fire bats now working on that Ultralisk, and it looks like what's left of that army got obliterated by the reinforcing siege tanks from the rear. So now Machine in a lot of trouble. So despite the 10 supply lead right this second, way behind in the bank, all of that was wiped out. Hasn't got that three o'clock saturated yet. Has been distance mining at his natural, kind of limping the minerals in. And it's going to be a tough defense, let alone being able to capitalize on an offense. With this, another base being grabbed for the long-term macro game and medic marines starting to fill out and grab everything else. More tanks being produced in top left. So you got some beefy boys out here. Granted, they don't have any weapons upgrades, but don't need it. Also with that, some additional radiates being dropped mid-map. If there's a push to the 3 o'clock, that will be match, I believe. I don't know that Machine will be able to repel, uh, repel it in time. It looks like that is where these Medic Marines are headed. un some Hydralisks, and a few other units engaging, however. These Medic Marines are able to sneak through, and again, let's see if they're able to wipe out the hatchery or at least critically get that gas down. And I take it back. Nice, solid defense by Machine, able to wipe out the units that were coming from both directions to at least keep this 3 o'clock base up and running. So the game continues. However, gigantic bank left and more streaming in and Machine is really low on minerals. 46 workers, if he can spread them out, maybe grab his this mineral only here and somehow defend it. All it's gonna take is his one grouped up, solid grouped up attack to end this match though. Additional defilers dropping some Dark Swarm mid-map, fire bats, and Marines actually without medic support gonna go ahead and peel back and regroup siege tanks. Let's see if they join the fray at the natural expansion. Honestly, if this bulk just unseages and moves to the three o'clock, that should be it. And I think there's a sufficient siege tanks to go ahead and defend everything top left. But yeah, it's not even necessary to push against this. Machine needs to claim some additional territory and he just doesn't have a lot to do it with is the story here in the late stages of this match. Defiler grouping up. Looks like he has at least capitalized on grabbing that third gas. So he's got that third gas up and running, but running into a pile of siege tanks with these Ultralis top left. Looks like he is going to be able to disrupt this command center. Let's see if that is forced to lift off. No SCVs there. Medic Marines getting plagued, however, cutting off the reinforcements to keep that top left secure. I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, back out and... Well, let's see if that single Zergling... Yeah, Medic Marine's going to swarm in. Not even forcing a lift off here. More splash damage, honestly, on this command center than I think from Machines. Attack trooping. Hydralisk Zerglings gathering up towards the 3 o'clock to go for yet another attack. 9 o'clock base. Looks like it's going to mine out. That 12 o'clock base being spotted. I think, yeah, Nyokin double-checking that. See if he is... Com I assume he's compsetting the 6 o'clock location, making sure... Yeah, there he goes. Just making sure that no additional bases go into Machine's hands. Machine looking for another large attack to potentially dive towards that natural expansion. That's going to send these Marines in retreat. No radiates being dropped as of yet. Looks like the radiates already out of place. Out of energy, I should say. Ultralis getting absolutely splatted. So pulling back down 20 supply, trying to grab that internal mineral only. But really, the critical piece is less minerals and more gas. Medic Marines just bunched up at that 12 o'clock location, so as long as he denies this 12 o'clock location, he can go ahead and grab that mineral only. That's just going to be Zerglings. Zerglings trying to stream up here to potentially grab that. They're going to get wiped out. Looking at the gas, gas is just about depleted at that natural expansion, so we got two active gas. Everything else, this is gone. So Battlecruiser snuck in there at some point, or maybe the Medic Marines in a previous outing took that out. But yeah, Machine really having some gas trouble. IBS for Zerg, although it's different entirely. 
Hydralisks engaging fully upgraded medic marine or not fully. No armor upgrades, but Medic Marines. That's getting wiped out, forcing another cancellation of the 3 o'clock. Irradiate being dropped. It looks like he was critically able to clear out that 12 o'clock base. Now, this could be a big take. If Machine can move in there, grab that, could be right back in this match. Especially if he can take the 12, deny the 6, and play from there. Medic Marines regrouping. I don't know whether... Is this just going to be a float, maybe? Maybe a floated command center out there to grab some minerals? But Siege Tanks starting to poke up. Medic Marines now going up to that 12 o'clock location before Lurkers are going to be in play. Peeling through some units. It's going to be a big fight over the 12 o'clock, and I think that's going to be the protracted last bits of the battle is, is who can secure or deny that 12. If that 12 gets denied, Machine will be out of this match. However, if Machine is able to grab it, might be able to find some lifeblood and move into the later stages of the match to catch up potentially. Nothing but Marines here looking to cut off reinforcements, finding some Zerglings to go ahead and wipe out in between. Hydralis, ooh, <laughs> scattering. They're fleeing for their lives and taking a lot of fire as they're retreating, though. I'm not sure if they're going to see that hatchery along the edge or not. No, it looks like they just want to go ahead and walk into that 3 o'clock and try to get as many drone kills as possible. Dark Swarm and Zerglings reading them. So solid defense. More Medic Marines pushing up. Looking for a Radiate. Ooh, I'm not sure an Irradiate even got off with that Science Vessel as it moved up there. More Marines starting to press up. Yeah, this is going to be huge. Hatchery now finishing at the 12 o'clock. So now a machine all of a sudden with a big bulking of troops mid-map. Some Vultures swarming in there to go ahead and drop some mines. He's got that mineral, both mineral onlys, but critically able to get that 12 o'clock. If he can get that gas down, might be able to get something accomplished. The Hydra... Ling Defiler army swinging out. It's going to take out those siege tanks who are camped at the natural expansion. Maybe wants another shot at the main. Also plaguing some science vessels on the way. It looks like they were already previously plagued, however. So there are going to be quick pickings for those hydralists. A single medic and a marine have managed to make it out to the 12 o'clock. That's going to be critical. Moving forward, and hydralists now pressing in against that medic marine army at that natural expansion more units swarming in i don't yeah machine doesn't feel confident in his ability to hold the 12 o'clock it looks like so instead trying to stream out wants to try to cut off the means of production here at the natural expansion as those zerg commies do science vessel eats the scourge still is going to survive but it looks like the hydralists are going to be able to punch through machine down on supply firebats joining the freight as well but not sure if that's going to be actually the firebats are going to uh, that's a, an advantage because firebats get the splash damage where the hydralists do not do damage under the swarm so this is one of those rare situations where dark swarm working against the zerg and working for nyokin here 12 o'clock base has been wiped out the mineral onlys are up but they are they haven't been mining this entire time and machine now retreating waiting for additional zerglings that are coming from the top right but siege tanks that have repositioned from the top left Engaging them. Firebats, Marines going to engage. Wipe that out. A lone, well, never mind. Not a lone lurker. Several lurkers going to try to scoop in in Burrow with that distractionary attack. But it looks like that, well, keep saying that's going to get cleaned up and then doesn't get cleaned up. Army gets wiped out. <clears throat> so it looks like this might get wiped out, but still a sizable supply lead, sizable economic lead. No additional gas. And battle cruisers now sailing out here, and this, should, especially without the filer support, that should be sufficient. Trying to clear out the turrets to maybe get rid of some detection, but I don't think that's going to be sufficient. So in the waning moments, of the battle cruiser army just wiping out everything here. Medic marines now marching. They're going to go ahead and find that base, and now that drones are here. They're just in time to get wiped out. Some vultures also sneaking up to the mineral only here to pick out the drones as well. And machine really hurting on resources, actually running low on minerals top right. His, the natural expansion here has been expended. Three o'clock base is still rolling. That's basically his one mining base at full efficiency. Hydralis pushing up, able to pick off the medic as it's stranded, but the hatchery getting dangerously low. In the meantime, top left is just about mined out. The natural expansion pretty full. You got that mineral only that is uh, mining, but that 9 o'clock base, all it has left is some gas. 
It's gonna be the March of the Medics. Wow, those are two well-supported Marines right there. Battlecruisers diving in to that three o'clock. Gonna need some combat support to spot the lurkers. Those battlecruisers should be able to make short work if they do some target firing. And the medics, he has just medics now from the north, so they're not going to be all that... Just going to be fodder, essentially, to buy time for those battlecruisers. Machine down on supply, but he's not out of it yet. Battlecruisers starting to sneak back. There are more siege tanks here to the top left. But there is a possible... So Machine down on the starvation match situation, but the battlecruisers have been wiped out. Machine is starting to mine at the mineral only top right. If he can somehow either take 6 o'clock or 12 o'clock, Remine and deny additional bases to Nyokin, potentially he could win this match because Nyokin is light on the resources himself. But as I say that, it looks like the mineral only on both flanks is starting to get encroached upon. So Zergling's trailing up. Move command now turning around and engaging that. Going to be able to wipe that army out. That hatch was so low on health. That's going to be GG for Machine upon losing that base, especially as gas-starved as he has been. So that will conclude it. Oof. Long one and a wild one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.